Turning now to your community focus from gun legislation and access to abortion medication to holding people and institutions accountable. There is always a lot of ground to cover with Attorney General Peter Narona. He's here now for our monthly interview. Thanks for being here. Sure, Kim. Good so I want to dive right in. There's yeah. some new gun legislation being heard at the state house as we speak. Yeah. Uh, your latest report on guns in Rhode Island found that the state is awash in illegal guns. Mm -hmm. Is legislating really our way out of this problem? Well, it's part of it. I mean, I think the record's pretty clear that when you uh, pass these laws, the risk of violence um, goes down. Uh, the risk to everyday Rhode Islanders goes down, and we, you know, we've seen that. You know, so for example, we didn't used to have a high capacity magazine prohibition. We've had cases where we just had somebody who we knew was engaged in criminal misconduct, and all we had was the magazine. There was no gun. So now we can take that person off the street, and make Rhode Islanders safer. So. I believe and have always believed that all of these uh, all of these bills do make Rhode Islanders safer, and that's why I've always supported them. Speaking of what's happening up at the State House, last time you were here, we spoke about your ask of lawmakers for increased funding for your office for yeah. the creation of a cold case unit, among mm -hmm. other things. Do you think they've heard your message? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I've certainly been saying it over and over again, and you know, we're really at a pivotal place in the office where, you know, frankly, the work that we do defending the state is really important. But my folks have reached a point where we can no longer represent the state within our ethical and professional responsibilities if we don't get more resources. And so we're gonna have to reduce our caseloads by not taking cases until we can get our caseloads where they need to be. I hope that the General Assembly will hear my call for resources there and elsewhere. We have brought back half a billion dollars uh, in the first four years of my administration. Our ask is a $2 million ask. I think when you put those two numbers next to each other, it's pretty clear that an investment in the office is wise. You told my colleague, Tim White, just how frustrated you were that it took longer than you would have liked to have been notified about a cross-contamination yeah. issue at the Rhode Island uh, Dr Department of Health's drug lab. You said your office would have to now scrutinize hundreds of cases. Mm -hmm. Any further clarity just how many of those cases were impacted by yeah, this Yeah, look, issue? I think that, that number is, is still a little bit in flux. It's over 100 for certain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the key there is to make sure that where evidence needs to be retested, we do that and get that done quickly, and we let defense counsel know what the result of that testing is. Um, it's critical to our criminal justice system that everyone have faith in the system, and lab uh, testing of seized narcotics is certainly a big part of that. How long could that process take to re-examine Oh, we moved pretty quickly through hmm. it. So I would say we are at least halfway to three quarters of the way through it, where we are either it really is both, getting the, the substances retested where it matters. Some cases were never charged in the first place or dismissed, and then where they were charged, getting the drugs retested. And then also where that new testing comes back, letting defense counsel know that in fact the drugs are what they were purported to be the first time they were so called supposedly tested. I want to check in with you about something I also asked you about last time. You've now taken some legal action against a Woonsocket wastewater treatment plant after sewage was continually yeah. leaking into the Blackstone River. What's the status of that lawsuit? Yeah, so that lawsuit is moving forward. You know, what I've really been encouraged by is that the city invested $2.2 .2 million in the facility to bring it to where, or begin to bring it to where it should be. But I think that lawsuit um, is an example of the work we're gonna do to keep Rhode Island waterways clean. We have another one in the works I can't talk about yet, but we'll be able to talk about soon, where we see situations where our water bodies are being polluted. We're gonna take strong steps to make sure that the law is complied with and that those waterways and uh, lakes and streams are clean for Rhode Islanders to recreate in. Mifa Pristone certainly been in the headlines a lot recently, the abortion pill. Yeah. You joined a lawsuit with 17 other attorney generals from across the country to keep access to that pill here in Rhode Island and those yeah. other states intact for now. What can possibly happen from here, though? Well, they're competing uh, decisions. There's one in Texas uh, that came out the other way, uh, as I'm sure your uh, listeners, uh, viewers have seen. We joined that case in Washington State because we, we had a pretty good sense of where that Texas case was going. Eventually, that case will be before the Supreme Court. That issue will be before the Supreme Court. But it was really important to me to fight on every front that we could to make sure that access is available to women here. And we've been successful. That Washington case means that in the states that sued, and Massachusetts, interestingly, was not one of them. What I care about is Rhode Island, of course. Um, that, that, that that important medication is available to women and their doctors as they make reproductive health choices. 
And just quickly before I let you go, you tweeted recently that you're dealing with uh, an increase in um, APRA decisions, yeah. the Access to Public Records Act, that allows people, not just journalists, but any member of the Absolutely. public, to get access to documents from the government. Why do you think you're seeing such an increase in, in these requests and, and these denials and people trying to compete yeah, with Yeah, and look, it's not clear to me. We t looked at it over a five-year period. We're up 20% uh, in the last five-year period over the previous five-year period. And, you know, some of them are, are people that have taken a particularized interest, um, I think based on, on sort of social issues and are, are kind of repeat filers, if you will. But we treat them all the same. Um, it's a quasi-judicial function that we exercise. I mean, generally speaking, as they come in, they go into the, um, into the queue and we reach them as they come up. What, what, um, what has bothered me, frankly, and this is another resource issue, is that it takes time for us to get to these important issues. But the reason is because of the numbers we're seeing. I have a limited number of attorneys in the division. Uh, we are um, half the size of, of the Delaware Attorney General's office that does exactly what we do, covering the same amount of people in the state the same size. And so the biggest concern for me is this lack of resources across the organization forces us to go slower than I'd like to be. But people are working hard and they're doing a great job and we'll get to all of them eventually. All right, Attorney General Peter Nerona, thanks as always for being here at four. Thanks, Kim, good to be with you, always.